Shabbat Shalom, family and friends. We are on the 46th Torah portion named Akev, which means on the heel of. It takes place in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 12, through chapter 11, verse 25. It also includes the reading of the prophets in the book of Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 14, through chapter 51, verse 3. It also includes the Psalms, books 115 through 118. And in the Renewed Covenant, it includes the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. So this Torah portion captures part of Moses' great speech to Israel during the last weeks of his life. The Torah teaches us through repetition of words and phrases. And note how many times Moses beseeches Israel to remember. In Deuteronomy 7.18, it states, Remember what Adonai did to the Egyptians, how Israel was saved from their enemy. In Deuteronomy 8.2, it's, it's, it's reminding Israel how Yah led them through the, Israel, through the wilderness to test their heart, to know if they would keep his commandments. In Deuteronomy 8.11, it actually warns Israel not to forget the Lord. And by the way, how do they forget the Lord? It states in that, in that same scripture, by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes. So if you're not keeping the Lord's commandments, judgments, and statutes, you are forgetting the Lord. In Deuteronomy 8.18, Israel is reminded of how he, how the Lord gave them power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto their fathers. And then in Deuteronomy 9, 7, it reminds Israel how many times Israel provoked the Lord, but yet they received forgiveness, yet they received God's mercy. Now, the Lord wants Israel to keep that right heart attitude towards the Lord. I mean, look how many times Israel's reminded to remember the correct reason why they were chosen. He doesn't want their hearts to go astray by thinking they had some inherent merit. No, he didn't choose them because they were strong. It's the opposite. He chose them because they were they were the least of people. In Deuteronomy 8, verses 17 through 18, I just wanted to read this because I think it kind of it kind of spells this out. And it states, And thou say in thine heart, My power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Another verse that kind of speaks to this in the Torah portion is Deuteronomy 9, verses 4 through 6. And that states, Speak not thou in thine heart, after that the Lord thy God hath cast them out from before thee, saying, For my righteousness the Lord hath brought me in to possess this land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord doth drive them out from before thee. Not for thy righteousness, or for the uprightness of thine heart, dost thou go to possess their land. But for the wickedness of these nations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee, and that he may perform the word which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Understand, therefore, 
that the Lord thy God giveth thee not this good land to possess it for thy righteousness, for thou art a stiff-necked people. In this Torah portion, there's also reference to circumcision of the heart. In Deuteronomy 10.16, it states, Circumcise therefore the foreskins of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. Now this may be surprising to some, because circumcision of the heart is actually in the Torah. A lot of people think that's just something in the, that's something in the New Testament. But that, that idea of circumcising your heart, it comes from the Torah. It's not just about circumcision of the flesh. Circumcision, the, that word in Hebrew, is the word mul, which means to cut off, to cut down, to destroy. Uh, this same word is we would also find in our reading of the Psalms. In Psalms 118.10, uh, it uses it in a different context, but it's the same word. And in Psalm 118.10, it states, All nations encircled me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. The word here for destroy is also that word for circumcise, mul. Circumcision of the flesh is really getting rid of part of your flesh as a sign that you are set apart. And I don't think it's a coincidence that is to cut off part of part of your body that's pr really a sensitive part of a man's body. And it's, it's coming from uh, the organ that also plays a part of bringing life into this world. Well, circumcision of the heart is to get rid of that mindset, uh, to get rid of those thoughts that do not align with being a child of God. So your heart that the, the Hebrew context for heart is really your inner being, your mind, your understanding. And we are to get rid of certain aspects of our mind and our understanding that are not pleasing to God. Now, why would we need to circumcise our hearts? Well, Jeremiah 17.9 gives us insight into that. In Jeremiah 17, 9, it notes that the heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? And so in the context of, of Deuteronomy 10, 16, I mean, we are to circumcise the foreskin of our, of our, of our heart and to be no more stiff-necked. So what is stiff-necked? It comes from the word kasha. It's the word used for harden. When Pharaoh's heart was hardened in Exodus 7.3. In Exodus 13.15, in that same context, it was translated to the word stubborn as to why Pharaoh didn't let Israel go. So in the beginning of the Torah portion, in Deuteronomy 7, the Lord is expressing the blessing that will occur if Israel obeys God's word. He will bless them, multiply them, bless the fruit of the womb, the fruit of the land, the grain, the wine, the oil, the newborn of their cattle, the offspring of their flock, and so forth. In other words, they are promised life. Everything from the people to the livestock to the land is reproducing abundantly. There is an abundance of life. So the Torah, God's commands, is the source of blessing and life to those who obey it. So why should Israel obey God's commandments and statutes? Why? Well, I, 
I think that the father is extremely interested in ensuring that we enjoy life on this earth. And how does one enjoy life to its fullest? Through obedience of the Torah. This week's Torah portion is encouraging to obey Torah's commandments to be blessed. However, many believers in Christ have been taught so many erroneous things about the Torah. Do any of these verses in this portion, Torah portion, teach in any way any of the following doctrines? The Torah is bondage. No, it doesn't. It doesn't say that anywhere. The Torah would one day be done away with. It doesn't mention that or give any a hint to that at all. In fact, it talks about that you'll be blessed for, for a thousand generations. Um, the Torah was only for the Jews. Um, it doesn't really specify that. It says anyone that follows God's commands commandments is going to receive those blessings. The Jews were saved by keeping the Torah. No, it doesn't say that. The Torah is temporary. No, the Torah was given to the Jews to curse them, or it was too hard for them to keep. No, in fact, the word says quite the contrary. The Torah was abolished, or the Torah is a curse, or the Torah was nailed to the cross, or or we only need to obey the, the spirit of the Torah, or the Torah brought death to those who obeyed, or obeying the Torah is legalism. None of these things are taught. And I understand that the Apostle Paul made certain statements regarding the law that may seem to contradict what's in this passage. However, everything must be understood in the context, under the context of all of God's word. I wanted to end with Deuteronomy 7, 9, as, as I, I just found this so impactful. And it reads, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So with that, I pray that you have a blessed week. Shabbat Shalom.